I travel to space with the dreams of a billion hearts with me. I want them to live this journey with me because I feel that it is equally theirs as it is mine. You know, for India, the first astronaut going to the International Space Station, second astronaut ever, which also is a narrative for the other nations as well. Uh, this was a chance for us to share the story, share what we do every day, share the excitement with billions of people. And in India alone, I think the number is, you know, hundreds of millions of children, you know, who get to see this whole process and the excitement that builds. Two, one, and lift off. To see your son be the first Indian of a U.S. space company, yeah. right? To be responsible for taking the first Indian astronaut to the ISS, this is literally unbelievable. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank my country and all their citizens for supporting this mission and me with all their hearts. And um, I would like to thank Gistro for making this happen. All the colleagues at Gistro who have worked tirelessly uh, in developing all the protocols, the science and the outreach activities, the researchers back in India, the students who developed the uh, outreach items that I carried. I would also like to thank NASA and its international partners Axiom Space, SpaceX for ensuring that we were trained adequately well and providing all the support around the clock and all the people who were sitting on ground supporting this mission, making it extremely successful. We are so excited to have with us the CEO of Axiom Space, Tej Paul Bhatia. Tej, um, so glad you could make the time for Asianet News. We want to talk about our AX4 mission and the huge success it had and it created so many headlines all over India and around the world. What excited you most about the success of this mission? And there were a lot of uncertainties uncertainties and delays and you know, we were there in Florida for you know multiple days so what excited you most about the success well first Krishna thank you for taking the time to speak with us thank you for the excitement also I can also see in the questions you yes, know yes. That, that you're asking um, you know what most excited me surprised me delighted me was the success of the mission right you know when we get started on these missions and we begin by bringing the crew together the science together the training, everything we're doing, we know we're bringing the whole world with us. So what was very interesting about this mission, also with the delays, the people inside the industry know this to be normal. You know, the general public doesn't know that, and even in past missions when there are delays or other um, uh, obstacles that come up, people don't remember that. They remember Shubhanshu coming home, yeah. right? You know, the, the welcome in India and in just in the U.S. and everywhere all over the world, the Indian diaspora, it was phenomenal which was the same, by the way, for Poland and Hungary and the United States. Yeah. This is a historic mission. Uh, what I thought was most valuable is we were able to bring the public, the global public, along the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for India, the first astronaut going to the International Space Station, second astronaut ever, which also is a narrative for the other nations as well. Uh, this was a chance for us to share the story, mm -hmm. share what we do every day, share the excitement with billions of people. And in India alone, I think the number is, you know, hundreds of millions yes. of children, yeah. you know, who get to see this whole process and the excitement that builds. And, and inspirational, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember, I think, because Shukla was part of the team, you know, when we, when did, uh, when Axiom did the splashdown, yeah. and I was live at three in the morning from New York, right? Because there was so much excitement, so much frenzy. How did this deal with India come about? And how was your relationship with Israel? Yeah, and, uh, and excellent question. You know, something also very historic here is the speed that this came to reality. Okay. You know, we're talking maybe two years total from when the conversation started to now. 
from the initial, uh, I'd say, desire and agreement between Axiom and India to the government-to-government -government relationship between the United States uh, and the government of India, um, the White House and Prime Minister's Office, NASA, ISRO, mm -hmm. Axiom, you're talking nine months. Yeah. So think about that. The two largest democracies in the world, mm -hmm. you know, which you'd also call the two largest bureaucracies in the world, yeah. moving at that speed to collaborate with a startup, a private company, uh, in a manner that has never been done before. And furthermore, in an election year in both countries. Yes. You know, think about just the legal and political and policy hurdles we had to go through, let alone the training and bringing uh, all the agencies together. So the, the relationship that formed just to get this done is one of belief. We wouldn't have started if we didn't mm -hmm. believe, mm -hmm. but along every step, there was a hundred miracles that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, maybe there was skepticism, but as we got closer and closer, the final miracle was Shivanshu coming home. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and what I told him, I don't know if you remember, we did a little Milne ceremony. Yes. yes. And what I told him in that moment, I said, is your responsibility begins now. Yeah. You know, what he has to do now, what we all have to do for the rest of the world to share this with it, this is when the journey begins. Yeah. So those two, two years of the relationship, the nine, me nine months, uh, of the deal mm -hmm. was just the beginning. And I think our relationship with ISRO, our relationship with India, the government of India, but more importantly, the startup sector okay. in India okay. and the investment sector the in India. The space sector also. Yes, yeah. yes, the venture capital mm -hmm. and space sector. And there is a lot of crossover between the United States and India in both directions. Mm -hmm. So I think we're at a major inflection point, not just in the global space economy, but very much in U.S.-India relations. Do you think this will serve as a catalyst for private capital to come into space in India? Because India, you know, as you said, bureaucracy, large organization, rich with talent in terms of space and aeronautics. But do you think venture capital and private investors will come into commercial space yes, from India? Absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it as a, a moment yeah. for it to be a catalyst. Yeah. Uh, but it was already happening. Okay. You know, my first visit to India as Axiom Space, while I was meeting with the government, while I was meeting with uh, uh, generals in, in defense, while I was meeting with, you know, titans of industry, my first night in Delhi, I met with all my venture capital friends. Mm -hmm. And these are guys and girls that I've known from here in the U.S. So there has already been a lot of crossover venture capital and high tech. That's, we know but specifically in space. So I met with many investors, US-based investors, Indian-based investors, international investors who are investing in space companies in India and in the US. So I think that moment is already here. Okay. And there's some specific examples in the startup ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, that we can discuss. We've already partnered with many of them, but I've also seen the government start creating that partnership. So there's ISRO okay. that we worked with, but there's also InSpace yeah. and NSIL and they've opened the doors for us to have this collaboration with many companies where we can do B2B relationships yeah. independent of the government. Yeah. Obviously for India, this is a huge milestone, right? Since Rakesh Sharma, the second man in space, but the first man to be in the space station. As an Indian American, is that a personal accomplishment, a sense of satisfaction for you to have enabled that history through Axiom? Yeah, very much so. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take it a step back uh, I'll take it a step back of, you know, me as a human, uh, and then I'll go very detailed as me as a CEO of Axiom Space and then as an Indian American. As a human, just knowing that I was part of this mm -hmm. is, you know, this goes to the core of my uh, ethos, my DNA. Nothing to do with the Indian heritage, nothing to do with the U.S. Uh, belief system. Uh, now as CEO of Axiom Space and for all of our team to be able to enable this. Now as an Indian American, there's a few things where this really uh, meant so much to me. One is on a family level. Mm. My parents, you know, my cousins, my family here in New York, my family in India, my family all over the world. This is something that brought us all together. You know, and we also formed a wonderful relationship with uh, Shooks and his family. Yeah. You know, um, so and also Prashant. Prashant, yeah, very much so. And uh, Prashant's family as well. And for me, it became personal. With that said, it becomes personal for me with each of our astronauts. I am extremely close with them and their families because now as CEO of Axiom Space, it's my responsibility. 
for their lives, but also for the entire nation. And for the longest time, I thought of them as my brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know, and especially with uh, Shok, like a younger brother to yeah. me. And the feeling changed a little bit. It almost felt like a parent, a responsibility. They're teaching me much more than I could ever teach them. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at them going into missions that we're creating and would I put my own son into that. And I know I'm carrying that burden of the entire world, entire company. So it took on a whole different meaning for me. Yeah. Uh, and then if we go a little more into that identity, yeah. you know, being a second generation yes. American. My parents moved to the US in 1970, you know, and I don't think they could have even believed this. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, they took me to Kennedy Space Center when I was three years old, and that's when the moment clicked for me. And it was a daydream. And it was a daydream for my parents, you know, and I think we've lived the American dream. That's very much real. Yeah. To see their son be the CEO of a, you know, a, a multi billion dollar company, that's the American dream that most Indian Americans mm -hmm. see. But to see your son be the first Indian of a U.S. space company, yeah. right? To be responsible for taking the first Indian astronaut to the ISS, this is literally unbelievable. Enabling history, yeah. for sure, right? But Axiom Space is now a household name in India. Tibor is a household name in India. Slavos is a household name. I did a profile on Peggy Wicks, and you, you would not believe how many people wrote back to me. Yeah. And the Iron Lady of Space and things like that. Everyone knows. The hype, the frenzy, the excitement, yeah. Even in Lucknow, where Shook says, you, know, you yeah. saw pujas and all yeah. these things happening. Were you surprised by the uh, frenzy or no. kind of the excitement? Not at all. Yeah. You know, uh, we saw this in the United States in the 60s with the Apollo yeah. uh, moments. Axiom Space, now this was our fourth mission. So we sent the first ever all civilian mission. We saw the same case in uh, all their nations. We sent the first um, Saudi woman uh, to space. We saw the same thing. We yeah. sent Italy. Uh, Sweden, Turkey, a, you know, we, yeah. we saw that. So I absolutely knew it. Now imagine that at the scale of India, Poland, and Hungary, yeah. sending their first ever astronaut to the ISS. So I very much expected 1.4 this. 1.4 billion people. Yes, I very much yeah. expected this. Um, with the cross collaboration and the international relationship, I'm not surprised either because uh, I have met with uh, the Hungarian ambassador, Polish ambassador, Indian ambassador in each of the countries, right? And we knew the excitement they were building. There's also a lot of history that many people may not uh, realize uh, between India and Poland. Mm -hmm. You know, in World War II, there was refugee camps set up for, um, you know, uh, uh, dispersed uh, families in Poland. And I actually learned through this, which I have a very close relationship with Poland also. My third startup was a New York, Poland, uh, startup coincidence. Yeah. Uh, nothing's a coincidence, yeah, though. Course, you know, yeah. um, I can actually map back why the deal came with Poland, but through some family relations that uh, saw the mission, saw Axiom, didn't even know I was part of it, sent me some notes and says, "Did you know your grandparents were at the refugee camp? Uh, you know, our family is Punjabi Sikh. You know, they brought longer to the Polish families. My grandfather worked for a British uh, company, and he brought the tents." And I, I almost didn't believe it. I said, how can that be? That must be made up, you know. And I went through the family history and we found that that is actually true. Amazing. And how would that connection ever be made, you know, and yeah. Yeah. it's a big deal. Can we see another Indian in space through Axiom? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, on multiple levels, you know, whether that's uh, government uh, of India, again, whether that's uh, Indian Americans, whether that's researchers, Scientists, mm -hmm. I think you're going to see many. Okay. All yeah. right. One last question. Uh, in terms of commercial space, what do you see are the top three trends and what's Axiom's role in it going forward? And also, tell us a bit about the space station and the modules that are being built and going to be deployed soon to kind of form the space yep. station. So I will take that from the space station, uh, then I'll talk about commercialization and I'll, I'll yeah. give you the areas where I think uh, you're going to see the biggest growth soonest. So Axiom's primary purpose for existence is we won the exclusive contract to attach our commercial space station to the International Space Station. International Space Station is coming down. That's a given. 2030? 2030, 2031. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's already been extended a few years mm -hmm. and that's I think wonderful but it cannot be extended indefinitely because it's a piece of equipment. It has a lifespan so we know that moment is coming. We also know we have the exclusive right, but the responsibility to make sure our station connects. 
So in addition to that, we are also the sole provider of spacesuits. Mm -hmm. um, the next uh, human to step on the moon will be wearing an Axiom spacesuit, and we sent the four uh, missions uh, that you know about. All those are forms of commercialization. Mm -hmm. We also brought ma many, many industrial partners, uh, Amazon, uh, Omega, uh, Pernod Ricard, uh, Bergeel Holdings, you know, many companies, um, you know, all these missions. So again, all forms of commercialization. Yeah. Allies and partnerships, right? From, yeah, from all sectors, yeah. all countries. Uh, I, you know, I think in um, uh, this uh, mission, maybe um, 61 different uh, companies, 30 countries represented by these four astronauts. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's very impressive. This wasn't just these four countries. Yeah. This yeah. was a global mission. Now, with all that said, I think Axiom's place in the market is commercialization. We are the platform that's going to enable industrial involvement in this global space economy. We're that commercial ecosystem. We're that operating system for commercializations. That's what we're doing. Our critical infrastructure is enabling what will be that economy. Now, what we're seeing already is very big advancements in orbital data centers. Think about compute, yeah. advanced compute AI, 250 miles up yeah. and then farther, Amazing. right? Uh, second area, uh, pharmaceuticals. You know, on the AX4 mission, we uh, sent up diabetic blood and we did a lot of tests like that. Uh, there's also been cancer research uh, that's been done, that's been applied to drug discovery that is, is being tested here on, on the ground. And the third is in advanced materials. Uh, that can be everything from semiconductors to other um, combinations of physical materials here on Earth that uh, we can analyze differently in the microgravity environment, but also that might settle and have different properties in the microgravity environment that improve life here on Earth, but also make it possible for us to expand far beyond Earth. Yeah. And so orbital data centers, pharmaceutical, advanced materials. I think there's like important. agriculture too. I thought, I thought there was some crop research being done on this. Yes, on absolutely. This you know, so, you know, the reason I didn't mention that as uh, one of the top commercial industries yeah, yeah. is there are probably 15, 16 that you'll see in the next 10 years. Many of these are currently in the research and development phase uh, for the understanding of how to live long term in space. You know, we have a saying that we've now humanity, we have learned how to survive in space. And now it's time to learn how to live in space. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so Thank much you, for Krishna. your time. I yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Wonderful.